So we have an update on the California cap and trade law. There's an article from the BBC. California votes to extend cap and trade climate law to 2030. California legislators have voted to extend the law to cut carbon emissions weeks after President Donald Trump said the U.S. would withdraw from the Paris Climate Accord. The policy, which requires firms to purchase permits to release pollutants, will be extended to the year 2030. California Governor Jerry Brown said Republicans and Democrats had taken courageous action with the move. The U.S. state aims to cut greenhouse gases by 40% from 1990 levels by 2030. Tonight, California stood tall and once again boldly confronted the existential threat of our time, Mr. Brown said in a statement on Monday. That's what good government looks like, he added. However, the vote to extend the cap-and-trade program beyond 2020 was opposed by some conservatives who said the measure would hit the poor by increasing prices for fuel and food. California State Senator Andy Vidak said it represented a regressive tax that would not make any impact on climate change. We could shut down the entire state of California and it would have no effect on the global climate, Mr. Vidak said. After hours of negotiations on Monday, California's state assembly finally voted 55 to 21 to put the legislation forward to Mr. Brown. The move puts the most populous U.S. state at odds with Mr. Trump, who said last month that he was withholding the U.S. from the 2015 Paris Climate Agreement with the aim of negotiating a new fair deal that would not disadvantage U.S. businesses. The pioneering cap-and-trade plan sets limits on emissions of greenhouse gases and allows companies such as factories and refineries to buy and sell permits to emit carbon dioxide. Some environmentalists, however, say that the legislation does not go far enough as it contains too many concessions to oil companies. California is one of the leading states challenged Mr. Trump's decision to scrap environmental policies of his predecessor, Barack Obama. The U.S. state's ambition, ambitious aim to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by forcing companies to pay for their carbon pollution has been praised by global leaders. Mr. Brown has previously argued that the 40% reduction target for 2030 must be met for the sake of future generations. California is the second biggest producer of carbon dioxide through fossil fuels among U.S. states. While I agree that this is the direction we need to go, this is where we should already be. The entire rest of the world is on board with the Paris Climate Accord and the U.S. is falling behind on the world stage. Governor Brown is giving praise to the legislature for a no-brainer move. The Republicans like Mr. Vidak that argue the second biggest producer of carbon dioxide in the states have no impact on global climate are just flat out wrong. Now we have three directions that this can go. The law, and the extension to the law, is the usual democratic centrist direction. This feels to me like something like the Affordable Care Act for climate change. We give the companies a way to pollute the air as long as they have the money to pay for the credit. I won't even go into the right-wing argument to deregulate and let them do whatever they want because that would just be a disaster. The actual left-wing policy, what the progressive Democrats should be for, is to legislate some real regulations that get these companies to move towards clean, clean energy. So we have a PPIC poll from January of 2017. A majority of Californians say the effects of global warming are already occurring. Nearly two-thirds of Californians, 64%, say global warming's effects have already begun, and a quarter, 25%, say that the effects will happen in the future. Only 8% of Californians say that the effects will never occur. So we have a comparison of adults nationwide versus Californians and more Californians than adults nationwide think that climate change is already happening. Four in five Californians say global warming is a serious threat to the state's future. An overwhelming majority of Californians, 81%, view global warming as a very serious, which is 54%, or somewhat serious, 27%, threat to the state's future economy and quality of life. Concern about global warming is 
been high for more than a decade. Since PPIC first began asking this question in 2005, more than 7 in 10 Californians have said global warming poses a very or somewhat serious threat. Today, at least half across age and education groups see global warming as a very serious threat. Those with annual incomes below 40,000 are more likely than those with higher incomes to hold this view. So luckily, we're at least moving in the right direction in California, and eventually the Democrats will move to the correct policy on climate change as they realize their base won't continue voting for them unless they advocate for the laws that we want. What is strange is the Republican infighting on this issue. So here we have a public announcement from Assemblywoman Melissa Melendez. Assemblywoman Melendez resigns as Assistant Republican Leader. Assemblywoman Melissa Melendez, Republican from Lake Elsinore, announced today she resigned her position as Assistant Republican Leader following the aftermath of today's Republican caucus meeting. Californians are struggling to make ends meet, and unfortunately, what I have witnessed by the Assembly Republican leader is a dereliction of duty to preserve and promote the American dream for every single Californian. Assemblyman May's actions on cap and trade demonstrate we no longer share the same leadership principles. I was elected by the people of my district to fight for a more affordable and decent California, a place where every Californian knows their child will have a better life than their own. Regrettably, I can no longer, in good conscience, serve as the Assistant Republican Leader. So, despite polls showing an overwhelming majority advocating for protecting the environment and that they think climate change is a real danger to the world, California Republican leadership fractures because Assemblyman Mays voted with Democrats on cap and trade. Polls show Californians, 81% of them, are gravely concerned about climate change. But Melissa Melendez would rather advocate for companies to be able to pollute the air with no regard for global warming or even for cleanliness of our air in California. If Republicans in California want to continue representing the people of California, they may want to get in tune with what their constituents' concerns actually are rather than what the corporations want.